Hi all, I have an amazing and shocking game to show you of Leela Chess today against Chiron. This is in TSEC Season 14 Division 1. Chiron playing with the white pieces, pieces plays D4. The opening book given is the Nimzo Indian. So it starts with the Rubenstein variation E3. Leela castles, Bishop D3, D5, Knight F3, C5. This is the end of the book given and Chiron castles here we have d takes c4 bishop takes c4 c takes so leela is giving white the isolated queen's pawn iqp as it's sometimes known for short a6 which seems very logical to be able to play b5 and bishop b7 sometimes a3 leela volunteers the dark square bishop and plays queen c7 and it looks as though there's a problem here on this C file, but this is this has been seen before. Uh, this kind of gambit. If White's now protecting the bishop, there's B5 happening to win C3. This happens. Queen E2, B5. So now after Bishop D3, Leela actually does take the plunge and takes on C3. So is this a little bit greedy? Has Leela turned into an alpha beta style engine on the materialistic start side of things? Uh, we have Bishop B2, which is actually a bit of a novelty actually in chess based live book. This has uh, this position has seen Bishop D2 before, and for example, there's a quiet draw in, in a game which didn't last that long after. Um, Debas against Slozer in uh, 2013. Uh, so this this was a rather tame uh, draw by comparison with what can happen. They agreed to draw there. In fact, uh, no, this is a much more aggressive idea. Bishop b2, indeed, compared to bishop d2. Uh, queen c6 is played. This is a little bit controversial, as if it's subject to tempo gains. The queen. Um, now maybe knight e5 was the expectation, and the queen could sit on this diagonal maybe at d5 queen c7 is also like before we get into queen c6 queen c7 is also subject to tempo gain and possibly uh the same kind of themes in the game so we'll, we'll go with what was played in the game i don't want to spoil it there queen c6 guess what white plays in this position so chiron to play if i give you five seconds to pause the video Okay, yeah, the two bishops are opened up. This one is liberated. D5, another pawn sack. So two pawns down, but great peace pressure. Uh, and it's very, very difficult for black already. E takes D5 was played. On knight takes D5, it seems white can play bishop takes H7 check. And now this hitting the queen, and now queen E4 check. And this is just really difficult for black. Uh, the, it's like a, a Greek gift working like clockwork after knight g5. Now we have queen h4, fretting mate. And if knight f6, bishop takes f6, makes it all work, this Greek gift. If the rook takes, then c8 drops. And that's horrible. Uh, so that's getting mated. And if g takes, that's just simply getting mated with queen h7 immediately. So this looks like a total disaster, knight takes d5, because of the Greek gift, bishop takes h7. Yes, <laughs> and if uh, well, if queen takes d5, then bishop takes f6, and now white has bishop e4 skewering the queen and the rook, so that's a massive advantage for white. So basically, not too many options. E takes, we have rook ac1, and now queen d6 is played. On queen b6, again, the queen's kind of harassed after bishop d4. Say here, queen c2, knight b7, knight g5 is strong. For example, here, bishop takes h7. This is a very strong attack. There's going to be uh, a rook left. It's horrible. This is just a devastating attacking position. For example, like this, knight takes f7 is a beautiful tactic here in this variation. And you can see that. That's another beautiful, yeah. This is this is a, a very very tactical refutation of the whole thing. Okay, now just just to see the magic of that analysis again. 
courtesy of Stockfish 10. Uh, let's have a look. Bishop d4, Queen c2, uh, with big frets. So, uh, say knight bd7, knight g5 hits the queen. Bishop takes h7, f4, bishop f5. Yeah, forget um, the pawn on being captured. And here, yeah, it's just look at this. Rook h3 again. Queen takes bishop d3 check, taking off f6 check. Knight takes f7, deflects the rook away from c8, taking on c8 check. Yeah, it's it's magic. It's the magic of forcing moves. And then this powerful forcing move, rook h8 check. It's absolutely uh, amazing stuff. Getting this chat, mate. Yeah. Okay, so anyway, uh, so that's queen b6, queen e6. Again, you know we're we're, we're in similar, we're we're in a world of trouble here, a world of pain with the bishop. I, I actually love this in my bullet games. This kind of gambit to get the bishops like this. This I've won so many games recently. It's just so entertaining. And here, yeah, it looks absolutely uh, too much pressure on the dark squares. For example, f6 being hit. And so here at Queen F4 is end of game because the knight can't really be uh there's no response here after Queen F4 in this line. Uh for example, if okay, Bishop E8, we just take on F6. Um what what is King G7? We play Bishop E7. And after the knight takes, rook takes, so F7 is hit, but here, bang, knight e6 check using the two pins and then winning f8 and winning the house. So yeah, there's a lot of magical forcing move variations in this game in the uh, in the unseen footage of this game. So Bishop e5 though in in the game, yeah, we have Queen d6, Bishop e5, Queen e7, Rook c7, and I just thought Leela was in trouble, absolute trouble because of the c8 bishop. I thought this is uncharacteristic of Leela. I hope there's no graphics card issue for the remaining games. I really do hope Leela can promote the premium division without any graphic card fault emerging. But this it it, it did seem a lot of trouble was uh after just, just the first pawn actually and why it played super dynamically. So this bishop b2 not even in chess plays lie but it's better it seems than bishop d2. So this is just huge trouble this position visually. Queen c2 now is played uh, so a lot of pressure on c8 and offering a third pawn brilliant dynamic play from Chiron maybe Chiron's a mortal game against the neural network this one bishop d4 so three pawns down but look at these fantastic bishops uh, so this is like a model attacking players game giving up three pawns without regret huge pressure on the c file and all of these squares are important. All of these attacking squares uh, are important for the bishop and queen. Bear them in mind. Rook b8, bishop f5, h6, rook b1. And it looks as though sometimes the queen's going to be in big trouble as well. We have a5. Yeah, that there seems to be uh, some other issues brewing over here. Bishop takes f6 now wins a piece yeah this a5 looks like a very desperate move uh maybe the, the queen is actually in big big uh trouble here for a5 to be played because essentially a5 loses a piece in this position so a5 bishop takes f6 leader is sacrificing a piece uh okay there's two connected past pawns but yeah there's the trouble is there's a rook on the seventh rank when you know when there's a rook on the seventh rank that's often winning games tactically this rook on the seventh rank uh we have b4 if a4 uh then knight d4 and here bishop e6 shows the power of the seventh rank for example here queen g6 then knight takes e6 it's crashing through to g7 if black has to give up the queen that's not very good that's absolutely winning for white. So we have b4, knight d4, and a similar theme is emerging, ripping open the seventh rank with bishop e6. 
So the queen has got really important access to all of these attacking squares. Rook b e8 is played. On f takes e6, queen g6, knight h5, knight takes e6, crushes black totally. Yeah, black would have to give up the queen. There's no other way to defend. And, um, you know, it's no problem after that. This pawn on c3 is no problem because it's just, it's just too slow. Nothing's going on there. So bishop e6, it has to be ignored. But now knight b5 wins black's queen, basically. Uh, we have the counterattack, but now using the pin, queen g6. And there's a magnif another magnificent tactical idea in this position after rook takes e6, which seems to threaten the queen, just to uh, take out that threat with rook takes f7, threatening mate and threatening the queen. Two powerful threats, which can't be really... Well, one, def definitely can't be ignored if black wants to play on, the mate threat. So Leela's lost her queen. She's been too greedy. She wanted Christmas dinner, clearly, on the chessboard, too early and too much Christmas dinner in the digestion uh, as a result. Okay, I just hope her graphic cards have not been fried or something as the ev from the evidence of this game. It seems as though, you know, they they say on the TSEC chat, uh, the banter, that you can't tell the difference between an AB engine and a neural network. Yes, if I was given this game, I would have thought it was Alpha Zero or Leela playing with the white pieces, to be honest. I usually do associate materialism with the Alpha Beta engines, but here Chiron has had its day. And now this to a normal human player would be difficult to get into Black's Fortress, but uh, it's all been very well worked out now, the slow infiltration of the Queen and Knight. Uh, table bases will be coming in, of course, to help Chiron as well. So the Queen and Knight, yeah, coordinate here with Knight E7 for the Queen to go to G8 to drive the King out of its shelter. And then there starts to be emerging mating net threats now that the King's on G4, starting with Knight H6. So we have H4 check. King here, knight takes f5, um, would be um, a winning continuation. Actually, pardon me, the game ended here after knight g8. So let's go back. After after knight g8, rook f5, the game actually was terminated here as a, as a win for white. So, yeah, this, this was fictional here. If it continued, check, and the knight and queen are driving the king forward. So the queen comes here, cutting off escape routes of the king. <clears throat> the knight comes back and then wins the exchange. If the rook had moved here, check, check, and the king's just getting mated. That's a nice checkmate, for example. Or rook f3, knight h6, check, queen g5, check, queen g2, queen takes, is absolutely winning. So actually, you know, a, a magnificent game. From Chiron, I gotta say, <laughs> congratulations, Chiron. The engine authors of Chiron must be proud of this game. Congratulations. Okay, but from a Leela perspective, I do hope they check the graphics card is okay <laughs> and not overheated or something. Okay, I just want Leela to promote the premium division. We've got this test 30 network if you go to lc0.org which is promising uh the way to check for the candidate network someone revealed in the forums by the way is on the upward path the one before where it's still an upward path just the one before that so you know that the next id wasn't dropping so those are very very good candidates to check uh, so we've got some strong candidates which might be better than the Leela 10 network. This was Leela ID 11248. So there's the 30 networks which have proven to be quite effective. So I still hope Leela can promote. She's in a very good position to promote the premium division, but a fantastic game from Chiron, which I believe deserves this, this uh, attention, this video. If you enjoyed this game video, then please click on the top left box, which should appear shortly to become a member at chessboard.net and play against other YouTubers. You can also check the YouTube analysis in advance of these games or the updated analysis from the improved menu learn from the masters youtube order button comments questions donations see the description like share subscribe with the notification bell really appreciated and also the new teespring store check the description for your form porn and other chess t-shirts okay thanks very much